thought I'd talk about cheetahs because they're one of my favorite animals and definitely um, probably my favorite cat. And I know they're um, the favorites or popular with a lot of people. So I thought it was um, high time I did a, a, a short podcast about cheetahs. So just to get the, the basic stuff out of the way, just in terms, in terms of size, um, at the shoulder, they're just on, or they're typically around 0.8 of a meter or that's roughly 30 inches. Uh, body length will be between one and just under one and a half meters. So that's from around 3.7 to 4.6 feet. Uh, in addition to that, there's the tail, which is relatively long. So it's anything from just over half a meter to about 0.8 of a meter. And that's two foot to about 2.7 feet. And then finally, um, body weight uh, typically from 34 to 64 kilos, so that's around 75 to 140 pounds. Now, the males are slightly larger, uh, but they're, they're both relatively small cats, and they're not classified as big cats, so they're not in the same category as lions, leopards, those sort of animals. So uh, cheetahs are, in fact, a subspecies all on their own. Um, in terms of lifespan, the average in the wild is anything from 10 to 12 years. Now, it can be up to around 14 years. Males will sometimes have a shorter lifespan if they get into a lot of conflicts, which they're likely to do. And I'll talk more about uh, the issues that um, are facing them at the moment. That can mean males, a male's lifespan could be as short as eight years. So um, there is a bit of variety there. In terms of pregnancy, um, the gestation period is around three months and a typical litter uh, will be three cubs, although they won't necessarily all have the same father. So um, females don't mate for life, so they'll have a variety of partners. And in fact, cheetahs aren't that sociable. They will pull together when they're young about, but then they'll split off again and be relatively solitary, like a lot of um, a lot of the big cats. Um, once the cubs are born, they'll typically spend around 18 months with the mother. And if you look at uh, cheetah cubs, you'll see they have um, what they call a mantle. So it's quite a lot of extra fur and it's quite long fur. So it's designed to help them hide in the long grass. So they prefer savannas. Um, that's where they you'll tend to find them. And they are preyed upon by um, other predators, so lions being perhaps the biggest one, and I'll again come back to that a bit later. Now, most people know that cheetahs are the fastest land animal, and they can get their naught to 60 speed to um, do the car thing is uh, around three seconds, so they're very fast, and uh, six miles an hour is roughly, uh, well, it's just under 100 k's an hour. Um, they, when they're chasing, uh, well, I guess I'll talk about, um, in fact, first of all, how they're adapted for speed. That's probably more sensible thing. So I'm just looking at things I wanted to talk about. So they've got specific adaptations. They've evolved to be fast. And some of the th characteristics of that are a very flexible spine. They've got long legs. Their tail is very muscular. It's quite flat. And it, they use it to help them steer. So it's kind of like a counterweight behind them. They also have large nostrils, large lungs, and a large heart. All of that helps them to produce these amazing bursts of speed. And another thing that makes them unique among the cats is that they can't fully retract their claws. So they're only um, semi-retractable. And that means they act a little bit like running spikes. So it gives them a really good grip. It means they can get away very fast and they can, main, they can continue to accelerate very quickly because of the level of grip that that gives them. Now, I've said they're not like the other big cats, and by big cats, I'm talking about lions, tigers, leopards, and jaguars. Uh, all of those animals roar. The cheetah doesn't. It actually sounds more like a domestic cat. It will um, meow, it will purr, and they also make uh, a chirping sound. So if you're listening out for a cheetah, you've got to kind of rethink what you're listening for. Now, when it comes to hunting, obviously they've got that speed. I've already mentioned they live in savannah. They, they'll they use the long grass to um, hide from predators. So what they'll tend to do, they're unique in, um, again, with uh, the, the big cats in that they usually hunt during the day. 
And that's why they have those sort of tear track markings on their face. Um, those dark markings are there to uh, reduce the, um, the reflections from the sun. So it just helps them with their eyesight. So that's very sharp and that gives them better vision in bright sun, uh, bright sunshine. What they'll typically do is climb onto a termite mound or a small hill. So quite often when you look at pictures of a uh, cheetah, uh, when they're, uh, cheetahs when they're relaxing in the sun, you'll see them on a termite mound. And that's um, because they're keeping an eye out for what else is around, whether it's prey or uh, predators. Uh, they like to prey on the smaller antelopes, so things like Thompson's gazelle or springboks. They'll go after hares. They'll even go after porcupines. So they'll tend to go after the small, excuse me, smaller animals. Now, um, when they hunt, they'll chase their prey down and they'll try and knock the prey off balance so that it falls over. And then they'll grip them around the throat. So like many cats, they like to suffocate their prey by gripping them around the throat. Um, in terms, of, So I've spoken about how fast they can run in terms of how far it's quite limited. So it's limited to about 300 metres, which is roughly 1,000 feet. So that's about as far as they can run. And after that, they are pretty much done. So it'll take them about half an hour to recover. And they'll cool off because they're, they're, obviously their body heat will rise quite significantly while they're running. So they cool off by panting. And they can also sweat through their, their pores, through their, their, uh, through their uh, foot pads in their pores. So once they have uh, gone after something, they then can't hunt again for um, probably at least half an hour before they're cool enough to um, have another go. Now, um, while the cheetah is fast, it isn't particularly strong. So when it's got its prey, um, often, particularly if it's an antelope, something like that, it can't drag it away. So it will have to eat the prey very quickly. And um, obviously you'll have other predators around that will go after carrion or go after other animals' kills. So that would include, um, that basically includes lions, leopards, baboons will go after their kill, jackals and hyenas. So all of those animals, if they're in the area, and they probably will be, uh, they'll be, um, they'll be able to chase a cheetah off its kill. So cheetahs have to eat very quickly. And while I'm on the, the subject of um, just feeding, uh, one benefit that the cheetah has is it doesn't have to drink water um, that often. So every two to three, to, uh, three to four days is good enough for uh, a cheetah. Okay, so that's, I guess, broadly covered the behavior reproduction. In terms of how many they are and where they stand on the IUCN list. So, um, you know, are they threatened? Well, they are. They're currently listed as vulnerable. The, the last list I have is 2021, where they're listed as vulnerable. The number of mature adults in the wild is thought to be about 6,500, which, which is not a lot of animals. Going back, um, if you go back to 1960, they're about 40,000. But you have to remember that cheetahs have been seen as vermin by f farmers, definitely in the 1970s. So by 1975, that 40,000 had reduced to 20,000. And now we're down to 6,500. So um, that's uh, not good news. Now, there are certain threats to um, cheetahs. The usual one, uh, which affects most wild animals these days, is loss of range, uh, loss of habitat. And that's often due to farming. And of course, that then brings uh, cheetahs into conflict with farmers, which they have been, uh, as I've just said, really, for, for quite a few decades. But cheetahs will hunt livestock if, they're, if they don't have the range. And of course, farmers will protect their livestock. So that's an area of um, conflict. What also happens is because their range is being reduced and the, the natural population density for cheetahs is to have two adults in every 100 square kilometres. So if you think of a 10 by 10k box, that's what um, every pair um, or every pair of adult cheetahs would be living in. And um, when you start looking at the land that's available, that kind of range is severely restricted. 
So the down, another downside to that, it brings them into conflict with other predators and particularly lions. And I've mentioned about the reproduction cycle, they can have cubs every three months. But the mortality rate for cubs, which fall um, victim to lions, is something in the region of 95%. So that's a, a huge number of cheetah cubs are being killed by lions. And a lot of that is due to this overlapping in range because they've been forced together into the same areas. Um, lions will obviously also protect their range, uh, I guess because they tend to be in prides rather than individuals. They can hunt in a group. So it's easy for them to take out a whole um, uh, group of cubs. Um, lions will also kill adult cheetahs. So uh, they are a, definitely a threat um, to cheetahs if you, if you look at the, uh, the situation in the wild. Now, um, another factor that cheetahs have to contend with is that they are very vulnerable to disease, more so than uh, most other animals. And that's because their numbers were reduced significantly, almost to the point of extinction around 10,000 years ago. It's around the time of the, the last ice age. Now, cheetahs did recover, but they recovered from a very small number of animals, so a very small genetic pool. And they haven't really recovered in the sense that there's now a, a wide variety. So cheetahs suffer from being very closely interrelated. There's a lot of in, inbreeding going on. And that's left them very vulnerable genetically. And in fact, um, as it would happen, I was reading something more general about genetics um, earlier today. And um, this is actually true to an extent with people in as much as we originally evolved from Africa. So that was where the, the, um, the sort of genetic generator, if you like, was going full tilt. Those of us who ended up in Europe also the numbers were restricted because of the ice age, which meant there's a smaller gene pool. So those of us of European descent are much more closely related than people from Africa because in Africa that genetic diversity continued. So there's a much greater um, genetic variation in Africa, which means that drugs that work well for um, white people don't necessarily work well for people who uh, genetically have origins elsewhere. So that's a whole subject that I personally find quite interesting, but it's why um, something like 90% of 18, 90% of drugs only work on 50 to 60% of people. It's because of genetic variations within the population or even within subgroups of the population. So going back to cheetahs, you can um, imagine that they are extremely vulnerable because of that lack of diversity they have. And that's just something that is, is going to continue um, unless they should have a population explosion, which is extremely unlikely given um, uh, what uh, mankind is doing everywhere. Um, there is uh, another issue for them, um, just looking again, is that wildlife reserves aren't that good for them generally because of the range that they need. Um, reserves aren't the best way of keeping them going, although animals are obviously kept in captivity and that, that sort of keeps the the species alive but it's not really doing much more than that um finally there is another subspecies of cheetah the asiatic cheetah but they are all but extinct because you'll find them in iran and um, there's less than 50 animals so if you want to see cheetahs uh, the cheetahs that are around you're going to find them in kenya in tanzania namibia and botswana uh, you might get lucky. I've seen them in Tanzania, in the Serengeti. Uh, I got lucky. I saw um, a mother with cubs. They can be tried, quite difficult to find. Uh, I remember going through uh, a drive on the Serengeti, and um, there's a lot of very long grass. It's savanna there, that part of it. And um, I just got luck lucky. I was looking the right way, and I saw a head pop up um, from the grass, and it was um, an adult cheetah. I guess checking out what the noise was and seeing who we were, and we were able to get to a, a place um, in in that area of the Serengeti where we could uh, see cheetahs on termite mounds, see the young animals as well. Uh, these weren't cubs; these were sub adults, so um, a bit bigger than cubs. Didn't have the the mantle, the extra fur, but nonetheless, it was um, good to see them. 
So that's pretty much um, all I have on cheetahs. But uh, I, as I say, they're one of my favourite animals. I, I think they're uh, amazing looking animals. They're certainly incredibly graceful when they run. They're very powerful when they run, but um, obviously not strong animals. So uh, they probably have uh, more to contend with than a lot of the other, well, certainly the big cats. Uh, cheetahs have a lot more to contend with, particularly because they they can't protect their prey once they've um, uh, killed an animal. They have to feed very fast, and they have um, obviously these other issues going on and other threats to their survival. So hopefully um, cheetahs will be one of those animals that future generations can enjoy, but um, they, they definitely have, uh, or those uh, trying to work to conserve cheetahs definitely have their work cut out for them. So I hope you found that useful and I'll speak to you again on the next podcast. Bye for now. I hope you enjoyed the uh, podcast. Now, this is just to let you know that my next webinar is taking place on Wednesday, the 28th of February. It's at 7 p.m. Central European time. So that's Paris time, basically. And um, it will be recorded. So if you can't make the live event and it lasts for between 45 minutes and one hour, don't worry, because if you register... What I will do after the event is send you a link to the recording so you can still see it and hear it there. Now, um, if you want to book, there is a link to the booking page um, in the in the description of the, uh, the podcast. You can also jump onto my website, www.ge.photography. And if you go uh, and have a look under uh, events, you'll see it there and you can jump on. So it's free and um I'm going to be talking about composition this time. So I've put out a few podcasts recently about composition. So this time I will be showing you visually uh, what you can do just to give you some ideas. So um, that once again is on the 28th of February, 7pm Paris time, and it is recorded. So hopefully I will see you there. Bye for now.